יש שפר בעיר, פליס כהן. אולייט, כן יו סי מי סקרין? כן סי מי סייד סלייד סייד? יס, יס. פרפקט, גרייט. So let me start. I know you know we are late by a couple of minutes. We're actually waiting for uh, you know the folks to join. I know today uh, is a holiday, and uh, you know we also got uh, you know religious celebration today. So I totally understand. Uh, just to call out one thing, um, in addition to what Hassan Bai uh, shared, we are doing this session on a weekly basis, and this happens on every Sunday from 11 to 12. Right, and every weekend we got a different speaker talking about different uh, you know things which are beneficial helpful for our job seekers right the focus for this session is purely the job seekers job seekers can be of any any background or any experience could be fresher or experience or someone who's planning to launch their career maybe next in next one or two years so this sessions this exclusively for the job seekers feel free to join save this link uh, you know somewhere on your phone on your laptop which so that you know it becomes a lot more easier for you to you know use that link to join keep in mind register this in mind that this sessions are pretty you know helpful uh, free of cost and run by psf most of our uh, volunteers are highly experienced uh, you know people who have been uh, successful in their professional careers right so with that um, let's let's move on uh, you know let's uh, get into our today's topic so today's topic is what employers want right so employers by definition are those companies you know who are actively hiring right those companies who keep hiring right it could be a smaller company big company or it could be a you know a, a startup the company which has just started its operations now and it wants to hire maybe some 100 people or less than 100 or more than 100 so we define employers as those companies who want employees who want to hire right who are growing right so obviously you know whenever they want to hire more people they they are, it means it is a signal that you know they are uh, you know they are growing and uh, they want people also to join them and then grow along with them so that's that's a good sign you know the moment you see a company uh, the best thing to check is are they hiring if they are hiring definitely you know that that's an indication that you know they are growing and those are the companies whom you can actually uh, you know build a connect with right look forward to network with and then you know probably target that company as a potential employer so today's topic is more on how a slightly different look right so we're not going to really look at all that all the time we have been kind of looking from the job seeker side this session will help you to understand what employers face as a challenge in the local market right what do they do whatever they do right now right if they got like a longer process of interviews is that really required what kind of skills are they really looking at it every company you have a different kind of experience when you go for an interview so every company treats the job seeker slightly differently while they use the common platforms when it comes to the interviews when it comes to the questions it can be different right so at, at times we fail we as job seeker even when i launched my career i used to be i used to struggle you know what they really want i mean why are they having so many interviews why do they want a person sitting here do an interview and also a person sitting in us or some other part of the world you know also want to talk to me right how many why do they want to really talk to so many people you know for just to fill one position do they need to talk to some 10 people right do they really have like 10 positions no right and so just one position or maybe 100 positions they're talking to 1000 people why do they take so much of time you know to really review the resumes and shortlist and you know make the offer so there are a lot of you know questions unanswered from the job seekers because we as job seekers don't have have a limited you know visibility in terms of you know what employers look for and what kind of challenges you know they face and we always at times kind of you know to push uh, you know uh, our anger our uh, you know our panic stuff we say that okay this company is not good or this company takes time this company is never responsive you know hr says that they will get back to me but they never get back to me right why do they really do this so we got a slightly different perspective and impression about few companies who never respond after doing the interviews or during the interviews you keep following up they take their own sweet time they respond right so that those those are few questions which keep running in our mind and we'll also cover few um, the important aspects what we need to keep in mind so that we can make it easy for the employer to select you right so i'm just repeating the sentence what can we do to make it easy for employers to select you right not make it difficult because the moment you we make it difficult for employers to select us he will shift the focus the interviewer will he or she would say oh this person seems to be slightly complicated in terms of understanding let me move on and 
search for some other uh, you know uh, candidate let me look for other candidates let me go to other city let me go to other college let me do interviews at some other time at the moment they shift the focus you lose that opportunity how do we really make it easy for them so how can we make it easy for them by only understanding their pains understand what they really want right what is the gap and why are they really acting funny why are they taking so much of time then we when when we prepare ourselves about what they really want then that's when we make it easy for them to select us select me select you right so it's this this session will give you some insights about it again this is just like couple of minute session i would definitely want you to further deep dive on this topic at a later stage to really understand what they really want and uh, to understand their employer's mindset with that let me ask you one simple question i know we got very less participants today so let's make it interactive so that's an advantage for us so what is the biggest challenge employers face now here employers could be those infosys or wipros of the world or it could be any product organizations like microsoft salesforce amazon or service now or it could be ca technologies or it could be any other it company or it can be you know pepsi or it could be any fmcg company who's hiring big time it could be any bank you know starting their operations here it could be a retail chain who wants a retail workforce to hire right or it could be a simple uh, you know back end operations a call center or you know it could be a, some marketing uh, you know agency who wants to hire people what is the biggest challenge they face any 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 answers you can unmute yourself or put it on chat window chat window is on what is the biggest challenge employers face you can unmute give an answer put it on chat window could be any answer so one of the biggest thing what you need to learn as a job seeker is be open to share your thoughts could be right wrong no one is going to judge you oh great communication skills yep answers are floating in more to come we got close to 10 10 plus participants here ability okay great more more we need more what do they what are the biggest challenge what do they really struggle for communication yes what else qualification yes we don't find enough qualified people in the region they want to hire yes what else problem solving and communication good it's a good answer yes we struggle to you know we give the question to them and uh, candidates struggle to solve the problem and we struggle to find as an employer struggle to find that best match what else experience yes companies look for 10 years experience the moment they post a job opening on job site you know they get like 5 six years seven years they struggle then finally you know they find someone who may not be really fit what else citizen yeah you know i am hiring for my company i have my budget as 5 lakhs i happen to get a very good candidate but is already earning 6 lakhs how do i fit in within 5 lakhs that's another challenge which companies face what else who could be more suitable for position yeah so if i'm if i'm make doing an interview you know i i meet like five people two are like almost same then my my question is whom do i hire i just got one position to hire should i go with this person or should i choose or should i go with this the other person and that's where you know it becomes really a struggle great these are great answers and thanks for uh, you know sharing your insights so clearly we see i mean all of your answers are right uh absolutely you know um, as per what employers are currently facing as a challenge it is a true inputs 70% of employers when I, again the moment i say employers though employers means those companies who are hiring right now or it could be those companies who are planning to hire in future or it could be those companies who would have just hired big numbers now and right now they would have slowed down on hiring so what they say is 70% or of 100% uh you know 70% employers who are actively hiring report a skills shortage right we all know we we keep hearing that okay you know uh, there are like tons and thousands of people you know who are looking for a job and on the other side we look at these employers they are still struggling they are saying that 
they there is a skill shortage you know they interview so many people you know even after interviewing so many people selecting one out of 10 or selecting 100 out of 1000 selecting like 1000 people out of a lakh people you know how much time it takes to interview close to 10000 people you know how much time it takes to interview 100 people just imagine you are sitting on the other side of the table talking to the candidates and you got like 100 people to finish the conversation how much time will you take you take months on an average you got 8 hours in a day and you are you are not going to interview everyone for all the 8 hours right you going to take a break you have to you need some other you, you will have some other work to finish so that way at the max what you can do is not more than 2 to 3 interviews if you go for a recruitment drive you are so exhausted next day that you would actually go on a leave or you take complete day rest because you spoken to 10 people you spoken to 8 people you have spoken spoken to 15 people imagine just you are not discussing with them just in in a general casual conversation you're talking them to them you're asking them question as an interviewer then trying to understand them then applying your mind to see where do they really fit now in, in your mind you also got ctc budget in your mind you also got what kind of skills you need to look at in that candidate you also got in mind that you know you need to close this position because as an hr we've got a target the way sales sales people have a target to close say you know 100 dollar deal or you know say you know a lakh two lakhs you know sale for this month similarly hr recruiter who's who's recruiting people would have a target to close right and this target does not mean that you just get anyone whoever fits or not fits fits the role it is more about getting the right people getting right people is so essential for companies that employers in the past when they hired not right skills when they compromise on the skills they failed so there's like 28 to 30% of overall overall expenses goes on the employee side which means that you know if you are starting a company you might invest like 1000 million dollars you know only on building the infrastructure out of that there's like 30% amount you need to park it only for paying salaries and these are the key key talent i mean these are the key assets the moment you compromise on the assets and if your skills if your talent or if your employees are not really up to the mark then they won't be able to get you sales they won't be able to sh- show that brand in the market they won't be able to grow the organization it is so critical for an employer to hire the right people that you know if they fail to do that on a long term basis that particular bu business unit that particular team right would fail right if there are like 10 sales people and out of this 10 even 3 are a wrong hire people who does not have the required skills or interest then the entire 10 people will other 7 people will feel the burden the other 7 people will not be able to meet their goals they will take the extra load looking at um, you know other 3 people not performing and with that the entire uh, team will fall short of their targets so that that's critical that's how critical it is for employers to hire the right talent and when this employers out of 100 when they go out and look for skills 70 of them you know 70% of them they actually state that there, there is a huge skill shortage right this shortage is because our ecosystem when i say ecosystem or education ecosystem or experience ecosystem is not up to the mark and very often you know you see this gap you know you got on the other end what employers are looking for and somewhere in the bottom is where we are as a job seeker if i am appearing as a job seeker i don't know you know what employers are looking for number one second i don't possess that skill set what employers are really looking for then finally what happens is i get rejected from one company then i apply for other company i get rejected i apply for third company again i get rejected so the actual reason for my rejection is that there is a huge gap in terms of what i possess as a skill as a job seeker and what that employer that company is looking for so that's one and second if you see the companies the way they are growing they are growing very fast globally the moment they grow fast their expectations will rise currently if they are looking at some x technology tomorrow they might actually look at x plus y technology right and believe me these companies are ruthless so when i say ruthless if they don't find talent here in india they'll go to some other country if they don't find talent in hyderabad they'll go to pune if they don't find talent in pune they'll go to bangalore if they don't find talent at all in india they might actually shift focus to us shift focus to uk shift focus to europe manila there are a lot of other countries which are really growing faster so it's about getting the right talent right it's not about really getting the cheap talent so when it industry started here in hyderabad in south india or in india initially you know what they were looking at was the cost that right? if i hire a person in us then i pay x dollars that one person is equal to 10 people in india so let me experiment so they experimented for a couple of years then they found real value in having their operations here in india 
So when they found that real value, they found that there is also a growth happening. Then they started heavily in investing in India, and then they started hiring more people in, in India, right? So that's, that's how the organizations grow. That's how the organizations pay focus. If one company starts the operations, I still remember when I started my career, you know, it was just a couple of companies who were there in, in, in Hyderabad, GE, HSBC, Microsoft. Looking at Microsoft, there are a lot of other product companies started their operations. At least feeling that, okay, at least I can attract people from Microsoft to join my company. Or wherever Microsoft is getting the job seekers, getting the candidates, I can also get from there. So one company experimented, the other companies followed that particular company and started operations. Now, if you see just alone in Hyderabad, we've got hundreds and thousands of companies here, right? And purely these companies have seen the success of other companies and then they also started the operations. So it's about talent exchange. Meaning, you know, if Microsoft hires X people, they also hire some percentage of people from their competitors, right? Amazon will target Microsoft people by giving some extra salaries, by attracting them, uh, you know, by giving some promotions or, you know, higher job, higher job grades or, you know, um, you know, good fancy designations or, or good salaries. Similarly, Microsoft will also target people from Amazon. Similarly, you know, you've got Salesforce who's targeting people from both Microsoft and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Amazon. So that's that's how the talent is exchanged in this, uh, you know, um, in this IT world. Similarly, you know, if you look at on sales side, you got people working for Pepsi, suddenly move to join, you know, other FMCG company, maybe Dabur or it could be any other company, right? And similarly, after they work for X tenure, they apply for a senior role and uh, join some other company within that FMCG. So one one experienced professional from HSBC or any bank, say HDFC, moves to ICSA with a with a with a you know a higher salary. So that's how the talent gets exchanged. The advantage of this, the companies who are hiring people from their competitors is that talent is ready for the job, right? Similarly, when 80% or 90% of people are readily available, what they then focus is hiring some freshers and you know, training them. Then that's when they actually go to campuses. They go to colleges, looking at you know fresh talent who, can, who comes with a fresh mind, whom they can train. So those fresh talent comes and join these companies and the senior talent will train them for X number of months or X number of years. So when this fresh talent becomes slightly experienced, then they start acting as an experienced resource and they start contributing the overall revenue. Then they start making the organization that particular business unit or that particular team more successful, right? So to give you an idea, it is purely a gap. Gap means what employer look for, the expectations are really going up and then our job seekers potential is not yet there. So that's where you know employees really struggle to you know get the right right fit. Now, I'm slightly shifting the gates, moving to a slightly different topic uh, to understand what they really look for in a candidate. And towards the end, I'll give you some insights how to really put an effort from our side to at least fill some gap, you know, by upskilling ourselves, by having that right mindset, by being more flexible, right? So that's uh, that I've parked it towards the end. So what we'll try to understand now is. What do they really the employees look for? So in a broader category, right? There are three things what every interviewer, every person who's representing that organization when can it, when talking to any of those job seekers or candidates, they look at three broader areas. One is skills and competency. I'll talk about competency in, in the next slide. Second is what they look at is the motivation. Motivation is nothing but you know someone who's really motivated to join the company. Third one is fitment match, right? So we'll go. We'll go uh, through you know each of this in slightly in a little deep deep uh, way. So first one is skills and competences. So skills competences is nothing but you know the kind of talent you've got. For example, if you learned X skill, right? You learned Java, right? That's your skill. Now, if you if I'm if I'm the HR, if I'm the you know interviewer, if I'm hiring for a Java professional, the moment I see you and I find that you possess that skill set, the first question what I ask in my mind as an HR as an interviewer or as a person technical interviewer what i ask is can you do the job if you if if i can answer this question in my mind that you can do the job then i'm confident that i can uh, you know select you for, for the first question which is can you do the job then i can move on to the next question then the moment i ask you some x number of questions and, for, and i get an answer or confidence in myself that yes you are motivated to do, do the job the third area where which i will check is more about fitment and match and the moment I find that, okay, you know, you, you'll be a good match for, the, for, for my organization, then I make an offer to you, right? Now let's understand how this really happens with an example. Now the example, what I just quoted, uh, you know, is a Java professional. If I'm looking for a Java professional, 
then and you happen to apply for that java professional role and when i interview you then the first check what i do is do you possess that skills the skill is here java now i will ask you like 10 questions so you will go through like three interview interview technical interviews and in all these three technical interviews you will be assessed to check whether you possess expertise in java right and uh, in this three interviews or in my interview the moment i find that okay you are answering all my three questions and if i put you on a technical test on java and the moment you score highest mark then i'm very confident that okay you know x person has scored 95% on java test number one second i asked java questions to him and he answered it passionately and in, with interest and you know he's kind of you know shown that uh, you know uh, he's possessed that experience and knowledge about java right then i would say that okay he's got that required skill set and competency the next question what i will ask start asking or i might ask as part of my existing question is is he motivated now this is this is where we most of our job seekers fail i'll give you a blunt example here right i know i know how to drive i, I can drive the car right if i if you take driving as a skill or competency i know how to drive right which means that if you are an interviewer you will assess me that okay i can drive second you will check motivation for me whether i will do the job if you are offering a job of a driver to me right i might not take it because that's not what my interest lies in i am driving for my interest i am driving for my personal use to take my family or wherever i want to go i know i got the skills right and you are 100% confident that i am really good at driving but i don't have any motivation and interest to become a driver similarly if i am hiring you going back to the earlier example that you know you are a java professional if i am hiring for a java professional you know for my organization right and when i ask you 100 questions to check whether you possess that skills and talent and uh, you know uh, certification on java and you answer all of my questions giving me confidence that you are a java professional then i tick 100% saying that okay you got the required skill set when i go to the next question which is motivation now if you say that no i am not interested in java i am interested in oracle right then i i'm not going to hire you because you don't have that motivation to work as a java professional when you don't have motivation to work as a java professional and your interest lies somewhere else and that could be a different technology or that could be a different organization or that could be a different country altogether right you appear for an interview here in hyderabad and you are still inclined to go to middle east to pursue your career you are still inclined to go ahead and do your masters in some other country whether you possess the skills or not you are not going to really fit my organization why because if i hire you who is not motivated then you will join the organization you will not put your 100% efforts and the moment you don't put your 100% efforts since you will be working collaborating with 110 people there in the team you will show your dissatisfaction you will not be highly motivated and the moment your motivation lacks the other people in the team will feel that you are not motivated and that will spread that will impact the other people uh, you know career the work which is assigned at a team level will get impacted because you are not showing 100% willingness you are not putting 100% efforts to finish the task because you are not motivated now putting that aside you are not since you are not motivated you will not stay with this organization for a longer time why should i really hire you when you are not motivated and you will not put longer tenure with the organization i don't want to again go back to the market i don't want to go back and you know again hire for this position because you will leave within 6 months and the reason why you will leave is because your motivation lies somewhere else so motivation is really an important factor research says that skills can be compromised if you are not really 100% java professional we can still train you to become a java professional but if you lack motivation interest willingness then we cannot create that willingness motivation in you right so motivation is an important question for any interviewer for any organization to hire that particular person if he or she does not have that motivation to do that job irrespective of whether that individual has got like so many certification he or should she could be from top institute he or she could be like 99.9% in their grades or has got a great experience in working from from different companies if he or he or she lacks motivation simply the interviewer will reject on the face of it saying that okay this is great candidate you know he or she has got like 10 15 years experience or maybe from a good college or really rock star you know candidate but motivation is lacking so i will not hire so motivation is an important question now when it comes to the interview how do we really show this motivation is a question you know which runs in our mind right there are different ways you can show that motivation the way you talk about your skills 
for example in this case right you know java professional so if i'm interviewing for a java professional i see there are 10 candidates who appear for the interview all 10 has got required skills i put all 10 through a test java test they have fit really well out of say 100 people there are 10 people who are shortlisted on the java you know uh, on java test then i'm confident that you know this 10 people has got required skills on java next important thing which i'm going to check in the face to face interview one on one interview is motivation so when i'm talking to this 10 people i'll go with a set of questions to check your motivation questions could be like okay you know uh, why do you want to why, why do you want to build a career in java right why did you choose java as a skills you could have chosen oracle you would have chosen machine learning you would have you could have chosen some other skill set why only java right that's another question i might ask the other question while what i'll ask is you know what really drives you to be a good java professional so this questions will give me an indication that how motivated and how interested and how willing are you to pursue your career in java the moment you say that oh i am highly motivated you know i have chosen java just because i like programming i like this particular course i like this java because i have seen my brother my senior my lecturer talking great about java and i'm just giving an example java as an example it could be something else it could be oracle it could be sales it could be you know finance role it could be hr role it could be any other role now the moment you show that passion motivation interest willingness to build that career right willingness to learn more about that particular technology then i am satisfied as an hr that okay you got enough motivation to continue working on this technology for a longer time but i don't want to hire you just because you possess the skills i want to hire you because you possess the skills and also motivation and willingness to learn further on the skills build a career out of it and grow in that particular skill so that the organization also can grow so that other people who are working also would learn from you and grow along with you so this is how the combination works right only skills will not work only motivation also will may not really work to some extent motivation can work provided if you are like half half baked in on the skill side if you just got 50% 60% skills highly motivated organization will take that risk of training you organization will take risk of hiring you and putting you through a training for 3 months initial time right that's how it works the third important thing is more on fitment and match the fitment and match is more about non technical skills again if you look at the first one skills there are two broader terms under it one is technical skills the other one is non technical skills non technical skills is primarily the skills like your communication your interpersonal your you know team uh, team management and or you know or or it could if you are applying for a manager role your experience on management side those all are your non technical skills we'll talk uh, about non technical skills in the rest of the presentation now even when it comes to fitment and match for example if you take an example of any company or take an example of your own company right if you are starting a new company on the it or in you know, a non it side what you want is people to take that risk right for example you know if you are starting a company you know by prepare by making a product and if you want to hire like 10 sales people who can sell that particular product in the market right you would want people to come and put that extra efforts because your company is new company and that new company will face lot of challenges and your since your new company is new company you may not have structured process in the company since your company is new company you may not really be able to hire more experienced people who will show a clear direction that go there and you will get a deal then those people whom you are hiring should be open to experiment fail learn try again so that's a match that's a fitment that's the culture you are looking at right the moment you hire someone very structured you know the in the interview you find that okay he's got skills perfect sales skills he has sold this particular product for some other big company then you find that okay this guy happens to be really a good fit for my role then you find that there is enough motivation he wants to really build his career finally when it comes to fitment and match he's worked with big companies right in companies where the process were more structured they use technology to do the analysis of sales right they were huge teams the teams were supporting him to be successful now here since your company is a startup you may not have enough technology to track you may not have a huge organization where that person will be able to manage a team then that person has to you know run the show on his own and the moment you find that okay while this person happens to be a strong person but he does not fit my organization just because my organization is smaller just because this person is more experienced and more structured and that structure does not exist in my organization because i'm small and i'm starting up so then there is a issue about fitment 
then what you will try to do is you will try to explain to the person that this is where you are appearing this is what i'm expecting this is what will happen when you join the organization why don't you just join the company informally to see how the culture is you take that risk so fitment and match is also really important nowadays and this fitment and match becomes an area where candidates get rejected when they are actually coming from different industries now for example you know if there is a person applies from infosys or some mid sized company here in india and he applies for a bigger organization like infosys wipro or maybe salesforce or microsoft one of the important thing what the check is since this person is a, has experience working with mid sized company will he fit my bigger organization will he be able to work with 100 people earlier he was working with only 5 people now i'm going to make him work with 10 people will he be able to communicate with this rest of the five people he has seen small organization and right? he has worked in an organization where there was like things were unorganized now it's going to be pretty organized with microsoft everything you have to put it on calendar you have to schedule those meetings you have to first ask for permission before you you know take out ask for anyone's time whereas in the small company you are pretty ad hoc going reaching out to anyone and taking that help so that's where you know the fitment match becomes more complicated and uh, you know more concerning for organizations and what eventually happens is the moment um, uh, companies you know compromise on fitment and match and if they hire a person even if he is not 100% fit the person will join and he will say oh the culture is not good in this organization he will say oh my earlier employer was more structured my earlier employer was a better company than this one right so that's how it happens i, I don't really want to confuse you with this uh, this particular slide but i just want to give you important things that this is what you need to keep in mind whenever you are talking to the hr what hr ask looks for is required skills and competences they also look at motivation they in addition to that they also look at fitment and match now how will you look at skills what the skills are looking at the gd job description will talk about those skills what you need to have how will you know what kind of motivation you are looking at what 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 kind of motivation the hr is looking at in in you you may not be able to, not be able to find those answers on anywhere either in jd or the uh, or the employer's website you need to keep in mind that whatever position you are applying for show that willingness to take the challenges show the willingness to work in that particular area right show that learning ability that you know you're going to learn more about this particular technology or particular job that's how you can show your motivation and the way to show that motivation is purely how you answer the questions if i'm saying that oh i want to build a career in sales right and then i possess required skill set how do i really show that motivation i would say oh i'm really passionate about sales because sales is the area where i want to build my career i've seen people growing in sales sales skills not only applies in that profession but also it helps me to you know manage my relations much better manage my relation with my friend or tomorrow in future when i want to start my own business this experience is going to really be helpful for me so i'm looking for a long term career in sales with your company and i want to really grow with the company so that's how you show that you are highly motivated the moment you start answering this way then the hr will feel that okay he is highly motivated let me hire him how do you show the fitment and match a couple of news next slides will help you to understand what this fitment and match will uh, you know match uh, uh, you know uh, uh, is about right any questions on this slide or we can take the questions towards the end i'll move on so a quick definition about competency because on this earlier slide we have seen skills and competency competency is nothing but it's an observable and measurable skills and also a behavior that contributes to the workplace effectiveness and career success in simple terms if there is a job job requires xyz skill set now xyz is nothing but that competency or skills java skills is a skill and competency you know which company is looking for sales experience skill skill is nothing but a competency required for that particular job in simple terms there is a broader definition and the moment you go in deeper there are a lot of other things which also falls under uh, in the competency now what employer in general looks for i have spoken about technical and non non technical skills technical is more about those technical skills which are required to be successful in that job the technical skills again could be it related to or it could be any sales or it could be any finance domain now what are these non technical skills its willingness to share information and ideas right commitment to teamwork responsiveness to change ability to work under pressure sense of ownership right multicultural experience if you worked in different companies and your willingness to take that risk without fear right what they want is they want more confident people and also people who are courageous how do you really show that courage at workplace by taking that risk by challenging the status quo 
saying that whatever is happening right now, I don't think uh, that is a right way. We can do it in a better way. And this is how we can do it in a better way. Well, I would have not done this in my previous role because I'm a fresher, but I'm still taking, to, I'm, I'm willing to take the risk so, because I want to make this, uh, this process more easy to understand for the customers. What you're doing is you're taking a calculated risk, right? You're showing that willingness. You're taking that risk of, you know, experimenting something. Then the, then your manager would say, oh, I'm with you. You go and try. Right? Even if you fail, I'm not going to, you know, really, you know, blame you. And if you succeed, I'm going to reward you. So that willingness to take that calculated risk without fear, having courage to initiate the conversation is something which organizations in the new age companies are looking at. Multicultural experience, especially when you're talking to global clients is another thing which is coming up as a new skill. Ability to communicate clearly and honestly with peers, managers, and customers. One of the main reason why companies look for good communication skills is only because in your role, you will be required to talk. In your role, you'll be required to collaborate. In your role, you are required to connect with the person who's sitting right next to you or connect with the person who's sitting across the borders. He could be in the US, UK, or in any other country. And the reason why you are supposed to connect with that person is because you've got a common goal to achieve. If I'm, if I'm supposed to work on a code, then I cannot just build the code on my own, right? I'm going to collaborate with my colleague who's sitting right next to me. I'm going to collaborate with my colleague who's sitting in the US. So the moment you know, I start collaborating with them, the important skill what I need to possess is ability to communicate and help him understand. Similarly, that individual, he or she also would be need to help me understand with her communication sky, style. So communication is not just about, it is not completely just a good English. Right? It is an English which helps to clearly communicate your message. If I'm saying that your code is bad or this code has got a lot of errors, then I should, I should easily communicate to him saying that this code has different errors without hurting his sentiments, without demotivating him, right? Applying that, you know, applying that mindset of, you know, helping him. So that's, that's a willingness you show to take that calculated risk of correcting someone by using your communication skills, right? So ability to communicate clearly and honestly with peers and with other colleagues in the organization is an important skill set. Nowadays, with a lot of technical folks joining the organization, at times this gets missed. And just this, and since it gets missed, we have also seen highly technical people not growing in the career just because they lack the communication skills. And this communication skills applies in every role. And I've shared the reason why these communication skills are important. It is important because I'm just reiterating, it requires in your role, it re your role requires you to connect, talk to your manager, share what you've done, understand what your manager is asking you to do. It is also communication skills. It's more about listening skills. And the moment you understand what you're supposed to do, you cannot do that on your own. You're supposed to connect with people around you and then do that work. And the moment you're supposed to connect with people around you, you need to talk to them. And the common language what you use to talk to them is English, right? And the moment you start talking to them, how easy you make it easy, how, how easy you make it for the other person to understand is also part of communication skills. And the moment the other person finds that you're pretty easy to communicate, then he will start collaborating with you. He'll start building a good connect with you. The moment the team becomes a strong team by having a strong connect, obviously the team goal, the team goal to achieve X thing, right, will become a lot more easier to achieve. So that's how that communication skills add a lot of value to the overall organization. The next one is understanding of business strategy and how you create your shareholder value and commitment to continuous learning. And there's an important skill which is which is becoming, which is gaining a lot of focus in every organization because technology is changing every day, right? There are new challenges. Even COVID is a new challenge now. People were so far who were working in a closed environment at office now are working from their houses, right? Now, how do, do, how do, they, how do they really learn these new skills? How do they learn the new skills which are coming up in future? AI ML was, we never heard about it five years back. Now this AI ML, how will it add value to what I'm doing currently? The analytics area, that a lot of new technology just come up. But how do I really adopt the technology to use in my current role so that I can save money in my role, so that I can save time, so that I can focus more on something else? How do I really utilize the technology you know, to, to make my work more easier? Right. So that continuous learning is something which is really required as part of our professional life. Our learning would not stop the moment you find a job as a fresher. Our learning actually starts from there. Organizations nowadays are not no more organizations. They are also the universities. They're also the colleges who are helping people to learn the new skill set. 
every organization has got a huge budget to train their workforce. The reason why they want to train their workforce is they don't want to hire again someone else for that particular skill set. They want their existing people to learn new technologies and utilize those technologies to grow. Once the employee grows, obviously the team will also grow. The moment the team grows, the organization will move fast, grow fast, right? These are a few in general non-technical skill set which are really required and which employers really look look forward to have in uh, you know every job seeker. Now, quickly, let's you know try to understand you know when you see when you reach out to the companies like Amazon or any technical or non-technical you know organizations, what do they really ask for? Just to give you an idea, I'll quickly run you through a couple of examples, right? Allstate, I, I'm sure you would have heard about this company. This is a global company. So what they look for is they're looking for someone who take who are willing to take challenges, who are ready for change. Right? There's a new new term which is emerging now. Organizations are changing very fast, right? So the moment they change, they want you to adopt the change, right? They want you to they want you to be part of the team who can bring the change, embrace the change is a new skill set which every organization is looking at. And this company has called out clearly. The Allstate company is saying that what I want is the self-starting people, right? Who are looking for challenges and who are ready for change. This could be a very broad term, but the moment it comes to an interview, when they're discussing, when they're talking to you, while they're asking you a question related to a particular technology or a particular skill or particular experience, they will also look at this one. Have you taken any risk? Have you taken any challenge in your previous role? The moment you say that I'm a Java professional, right? In my previous role, I was asked to work on a project which I never worked on it. And it was a global project. I never worked with people in US. The first time I started collaborating with them. Then what it means is you took a challenge there. While you didn't have an experience to work with global clients, global customers from US, you took the challenge. You didn't have an experience in a particular technology, but you still took the challenge to learn the technology. That's how they assess your challengeability, right? And if you give an example saying that, oh, my organization has gone through a lot of changes. In last two, uh, two years time, the management changed twice. The technology which we, which we were using has changed thrice. Then I had to learn. Then the interview would ask you, how did you learn? Then you, the moment you say that, oh, I learned with a lot of passion because I'm always looking to learn new things and uh, I took it as a challenge. And then you know I kind of embraced the change. Then this company, will feel that, okay, this person is ready for change, any kind of change, right? And this person has taken challenges in his previous role. He's a right fit for me. The last question where I showed here, which is fitment and match, that's the answer for that, right? That's what, how organization will clearly call out in their, you know, in their on, on their job, job descriptions. They'll call out clearly on their, uh, you know, job descriptions on their website that this is the mindset, these are, the non-technical skills, this is the fitment aspects which we look when we hire people for my organization. Let's look at a few more examples. Amazon, right? Amazon is looking, always looking for innovators, right? Those people who can really come up with new ideas. Now, new ideas need not be a bigger, broader, you know, technology or new, new products. It could be simple, as simple as, you know, you're working on some process and you want to change the process because you want to save time and you want to make it easy for the entire team. That's also an innovation, right? And if you've done this in the previous role, or if you've done this as part of your college life, and if you're talking to an Amazon recruiter, give an example of how you innovated when you were part of the college group or how you innovated in your previous role, he will feel that, okay, this person is the right fit, right match for my organization culture. Let me hire him, right? So there's a few skills, the non-technical skills, what organizations really look for. What they want is they want innovators. They want innovators, specific to Amazon. And again, if you see, Amazon has clearly defined its leadership principles. One tip of advice for you is if you're applying for Amazon, any opening with Amazon, search for Amazon leadership principles and you'll find a bunch of principles and whatever question they ask in the entire interview process, if they've got, got like 10 people who are interviewing you, all 10 people, whatever questions they ask are directly or indirectly connects to those leadership principles. If the leadership principle, one of the leadership principle is thinking long-term or innovating, they will, while asking questions, they'll also ask you a question about how did you innovate in the past, right? So that way they will try to connect whatever questions they ask to leadership principles. So search for leadership principles and prepare, you know, if you want to crack Amazon interview. And if you look at Cisco, right? What they're calling out is they're saying someone who demonstrate a love for learning. 
who are self driven and flexible how will you call out when you're talking to cisco hr that you love, love, love for learning and you are self driven and flexible you will say that oh this technology i was so passionate that i used to put 100 uh, you know i was used to put uh, every day 8 hours to learn this technology and within a week i learned this technology right that's that's a love i've got for this particular technology right i used to spend sleepless nights to understand uh, this particular technology right i am self driven i don't really depend on anyone what i do is when the moment i take up the task i want to start i, I don't wait for others to start and the moment you connect with an example about how you did that in your previous role or as part of your college life they say that oh you are self driven and you are flexible and how do you show that you are flexible you might just call out saying that when i was in college i was you know working on a project and in that project and i was required to work on x technology or x process and suddenly my management came back and said no you need to change the process then without even questioning the management i immediately jumped on it and started adopting a new way a new process to make sure that i complete this project on time and i completed the project on time even in spite of you know the management uh, new direction so that's a flexibility you show right that's how cisco will understand that okay this person has got flexibility this person is self driven this person has this person loves this loves to learn new things then they will hire you right these are the values and areas where they organize few organizations really focus more on so intel let's look at what intel looks at intel looks at challenging the status quo what is the status quo means you join an organization or you as part of your college life there is a example library system right in your college library system is just way old system which is running from last 30 years or 40 years and you go back and you know kind of ask the library in charge saying that okay i think this design of library is not helping can you please change this library style you can move your desk you can move books here you know segregate books basis the interest level of people so that it becomes lot more easier for students to go and grab that book what you doing is you are challenging the status quo whatever was running what people were thinking was okay you are going and challenging it saying that you can make this more okay more easy for other students similarly if you have worked in an organization where you have been following one process for years together you go and say that you challenge saying that you need to change the process because this process the moment while well, this process can be good but there is a better way of doing this process and this is a better way and by adopting my process by changing this you will save x number of hours you will save x number of resources then you are actually challenging the status quo then intel hr would try to understand whether have you taken taken up any challenges to cha- to have you taken up any task of challenging the status quo in your college life or have you taken up any challenge to to question the status quo in your professional uh, in your previous company right that's how they try to ask the questions and connect and try to get the answers and sometimes you know you you work in an ambiguous environment what is this ambiguous environment is you don't have enough resources around you there's a lot of confusion around about how to finish this project but you put extra efforts to make it easy you connect with instead of connecting with three people you connect with 30 people so that you know you get more insights into project so what you are doing is we are working in in an ambiguous environment so the moment you give an example of if you worked in this kind of ambiguous in, environment in the past we got in the right fit for me for my organization right so that's how they actually assess this non technical skills dell dell focuses more on achieve results and customer focused the last questions whether how have you really focused on achieving results how were you customer focused the moment you give, give an example they'll be more confident that you are aligning as per their values they want innovative thought leaders every company right every company microsoft they want people to be creative whenever they are dealing with any kind of you know projects one additional thing what microsoft looks for is towards the bottom it, it says show us you are excited and ready to work for microsoft so when you're talking to microsoft hr show that zeal show that interest show that willingness to work for microsoft how will you show it who oh, i have been passionately behind microsoft hr for years together i have been following this company ever since i knew about this company i know microsoft now has like 1 lakh people 2 lakh people in the center microsoft started its operations in hyderabad since then i know that you know this is the organization where i should join the moment i graduated from my college the only dream i had wherever i might start my career but i want to build my career with microsoft that's where you showing your excitement they want to see that excitement in you and the moment you show this excitement they will say that okay even if you does not possess 100% skills if you are close by to 100 or close by to 70 80 the moment you show your excitement and willingness to work they will hire you and then they will train you 
So you need to know what this companies, what these employers are really looking for in the in, in the in the job secrets. The moment you know this, you know that job Microsoft looks for some excitement, people who are willing to work for the organization, then you can structure your conversation. You need to you will know that okay, this is what I need to talk, talk to the interviewer from Microsoft. There is a huge amount of preparation required whenever you go for an interview. You cannot go with the same standard questions and apply those same standard answers for different questions from different companies. If you're applying for JP Morgan Chase, right? What they look for is positive attitude and flexibility. You need to go with an example showing that you know your, your attitude is positive. You need to go with an example talking about your flexibility and also talk about your proven relevant success. Right? So that's how you need to really prepare. And how do you prepare is by knowing what these companies are looking for, in addition to the technical skills. Technical skills always will not guarantee a job for you. In few instances, it might. But yeah, Shadir, so how did you get this information? So this we look for candidates, right? So this from yes. can we can you guide from where can we get this information? Yep, yep, we'll do that. So this every company has this information on their website. Right? What do you do is just open AT&T website, search for careers, and in somewhere in that career space, you will find this option, find these details. Right? And you open a JD. Nowadays, every job description, if you look at the structure of the job, job description, it starts with first company details. AT&T is so-and-so, big company. It has got so many employees. It has got presence in so many countries. Next to that paragraph, they will also talk about this, saying that we look for candidates who are passionate about technology and innovation. Right? And then they will talk about the required skill set, technical and non-technical skill set. So if you want to know this information, as part of your preparation for that company, if you're applying for Microsoft, go to Microsoft website, look, click on careers, and also click on about us, then collect those information, write it down a document. Then open the JD, and the JD also captures those details. Open LinkedIn, search for Microsoft, and look at what they are really describing about how that company really describes in different platforms. These are the two, three areas where you can find this information. And believe me, this is the preparation what you need to have. You can't just apply the same sauce everywhere. You need to go with a customized answer to these questions. AT&T, you know, similarly, HP, they want energetic people. They want passionate and team-oriented individuals. Bank of America, what they want is they want people to be very focused on the approaches. Whatever you do, show that focus. If you show that, you had a 100% focus on whatever you did in the previous role, Bank of America may like it. And then they might actually you know, hire you, right? G, what they look at is they want clear thinkers. They want people who can generate new and creative ideas, people who can really value teamwork, right? So you need to look at all this, which are company, you know, kind of apply as part of your preparation, apart from looking at JD, apart from getting prepared for technical questions, look, prepare for non-technical questions. And those non-technical questions are from these attributes. And these attributes, you will find it on the company website as well as on the JD. I'm now slightly shifting the gates. Now trying to you know, give you some, some thought you know, about as a job seeker, what you need to really keep in mind. I know we just left out with a couple of minutes. So I'll try to close it faster, maybe in another five minutes. Now, see, it is all about your mindset. One of the important things I wanted to showcase or as a job seeker, what you need to keep in mind is you need to create a right mindset to apply for this job and have a right preparation. Right mindset will lead, will lead to right preparation. And with the right preparation, you will finally get the job, the job what you're looking at. So you need to first remove that fears which are creating a lot of hesitation and panic. And the moment you remove that fear, you become more confident. The best way to beat your fears when you are appearing for any interview is preparing. Preparation will reduce 50 to 70% fear in you and you become more confident. The moment you know Microsoft looks for technical skills, these are one, two, three skill, technical skills. And these are the few motivators what they look for for fitment, then you are more confident. Earlier, you didn't know this information, so you were not confident, right? And always go with the mindset that there is a job where you'll be required, right? And then don't always focus on a job you really love. You may have very little insight about the job, job market. The moment you join one job, job which you may not really love now, but at a later stage, you might really be interested pursuing that job for a longer tenure because you started loving them. And if you're saying that I want a high-end technology, I want a job only in artificial intelligence. You don't know anything about artificial intelligence. You don't know how this artificial intelligence would grow in future. And you have a job in front of you, which is on Java or, or a job in front of you, which is on Oracle or some age-old technology. I would prefer to join that age-old technology because currently I'm, I'm unemployed. I'm a fresher. 
I cannot make more choices. If I'm being hired for a technology, let me first join that company, join the technology. Let, let me try to understand how that will help me grow. If after joining, I find that this company is not the company which I'm looking at. If this technology is not what I'm looking at long-term, I will spend one or two years, build connects, try to understand how this organization works. Then I learn the new technology while working in this job. Then I shift to a different technology or apply further technology within this organization. As a job seeker, if I'm currently not employed, I would, if I'm a fresher, I would just join whichever job becomes available for me, provided that in that, provided that job is in that area. For example, if I'm, my education is an IT, I would not take a risk of joining some sales organization. But if my education is an IT, if I'm looking for machine learning or artificial intelligence job, I might not get that job right away. So I might choose to join other technology for a smaller organization and slowly graduate towards that long-term passion and interest. How? By working in this company, parallelly learning the technology, right? And be flexible to move anywhere. When I spoke about flexibility, flexibility also means that you're flexible whenever required, your work location changes. Whenever required, you might be asked to work from home or you might be asked to you know, move to a different country or different place. So show that flexibility. Along when you're talking about flexibility on different aspects, talk about it. That I'm I'm a fresher, I'm I'm willing to you know join any any location, whichever location you want me to join. Right. So that's those are a few things which are really required as a job seeker. Few additional things, and I'll close my presentation. At times, your passion may not really get you a job immediately. This can be a conflicting statement, but if you are not, if you're not having a job now, if you just graduated from your college and if you're if you're planning to launch your career, you got some passion towards one technology. As I told you, you may not get that technology work right away. You have to earn that after you join in, in, in one position or in one company. Ask for advice, try to build a very strong network and a strong network also will help understand what these companies are really looking for. If you talk to someone from Microsoft and ask him in addition to the technical skills, what do you really is see as a culture in that organization? The people who are working in that organization will come out and say that, oh, our culture is pretty flexible. Whomever we hire, we hire people with a lot of interest to build a career in Microsoft. It connects to what you have seen on the website. Then you are more prepared. You know, when, if you want to talk to the HR, then you will structure your conversation and answers accordingly. Right? So mindset definitely matters. Um, I will try to close it here. And then, uh, you know, we will uh, get into question and answers about the topic we just discussed. You can put your question on chat window or you can unmute and ask. We will we will have about some three to four minutes for Q&A and then we can close uh, today's program. Shafir, uh, uh, the thing that you said about JD and getting that uh, text right. So generally our view is like these are very generic state, generic skills that they ask, uh, create creativity, innovation, all that stuff, right? So do they really take that seriously when they write it in the JD and when they write it in the yeah. uh, company's uh, website? Yeah, JD, see again, JD, if you see, JD will capture all these details. But if when you are submitting an application for any company, you, we can call out this in your resume. So your resume should be customizable, right? If you are ideally, the, the way resume works is, resume for Microsoft can be slightly different for my, you know, for Amazon. Normally what we do is we just use one common resume and apply for 10 jobs at Microsoft, 10 jobs at Amazon. That's not how the resume works. Resume should be changed, especially if you are an experienced person, resume should change. If you're fresher to some extent, the content details in that resume can be same to some extent, or maybe 80% situations, you know, resume can be same, but when you are actually as part of your preparation, now if you're applying for that particular company, then you do accordingly customize that resume and call out saying that I'm creative and give an example if you can. Or even if you don't give an example in that resume, in the interviewer, he will ask you saying that, oh, you wrote in your resume that you are creative. Can you give me an example? You need to be prepared for that example. Then you can say that I am creative. I've written in my resume as I'm creative because uh, you know this is what I did as part of my college life. So this is what I did in my previous company. Then the moment you connect with an example about what you did in the past, then the interviewer will be more confident. Hello, Shafiq Bhai. Yeah. I'm not able to hear you. Is anyone able to hear you? Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Okay, sure. Yeah, Shafiq Yeah. 
You can be right. Yeah. Yeah, you just lost it for a few seconds. Hmm. I'm sorry. I hope I answered the question. So, um, any other questions? All right, so this is pretty wide topic. Um, I'm uh, I tried my best to cover a couple of important aspects which you need to know as a job seeker. Uh, the recording and the presentation will be made available to you. Um, join our PSF jobs, that's our active forum where we keep communicating about different activities we do under PSF, right? And join us uh, for the next session next Sunday, 11 o'clock. You'll have a different speaker talking about a different, different topic. All right, thank you so much for your time and all the best with your career. Thank you very much, Shahar Bhai. Thanks a lot. It was Thank really you. helpful. Uh, I'll post the details in the WhatsApp group. We have a special WhatsApp group for this webinar. So I'll post the details there also. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.